Lads, did you think I wasn't going to break down Russian Badger's latest drop? He's reviewing Insurgency Sandstorm. This is uh, a shooter based on the time that I was uh, actually in Afghanistan, right? The 2010s. Even the camo looks familiar. Let's let's do it. Let's talk it out. 150. I'm sure Badger will play it straight, of course. Meters, and you did 50. Welcome to... Okay, I love how this dude is like a sort of modern combatant guy, and this is actually spot on to the 2010s. ACU patterned uniform, flags. Okay, flags are not supposed to be on both shoulder, but he does have his combat patch under the flag. That's a nice touch. Also, I don't know what's going on with this uh, plate carrier chest rig, but actually when I was deployed, they let you buy your own aftermarket chest rig, and, and this isn't that different. Of course, the helmets had helmet covers. Those were ACU pattern as well, but those nods look, look broadly right to Insurgency Sandstorm, an American dating simulator that offers cutting-edge romance mechanics such as post-traumatic swag disorder and 50 caliber based dialogue. <laughs> Much like most dating sims, it's all about communication and joint surveillance target attack. I mean, the joke is, of course, in the military, uh, dating is a uh, super fucked up because you have this problem of the market, right? And, you know, there, there are researchers who use market models uh, to simulate dating outcomes and one of the things that's interesting is that in the dating markets uh, around military bases the military is 80 to 85 percent um male and so you end up in these situations where the tiny number of local females because oftentimes these bases are located in rural america you end up in a situation where the like population of females are so, single females right available females are so much smaller than the available males um, that obviously excluding, you know, uh, uh, homosexual relationships, you end up in a situation where just like relatively low, uh, low status partners end up partnered with like really high status guys. Um, you know, I knew a lot of like very high performing in great shape, super accomplished officers with like master's degrees um, and like sterling, you know, careers ahead of them married to like overweight, stay at home, like grew up in a trailer cashier at Walmart types. Um, not that there's anything wrong, right? It, but like, let's be honest, we're all realistic here. We're all friends. The future, like, you know, Future generals, uh, you know, are not going to be marrying Walmart cashiers, but that's who you're stuck with. You see, we see it all the time. And oftentimes, unfortunately, um, this also has the additional bad effect of having real red flag issues. For example, partners who normally you would simply screen out because their um, behaviors are so toxic um, that it's clear that it's not healthy or good to be in a relationship. But when you have literally no prospects, you'll sit there and go, well, it's not a problem. The classic one is, is when they uh, work as a stripper, right? You say, you know, oh, or, or I'm sorry, let's be even more specific when they're like abusive, right? When they hit you or call you names or uh, do other th behaviors that you're just like, I shouldn't be treated this way. And if you thought you had alternatives, better other prospects, you wouldn't accept being treated that way. You would break up with this person and you would say, no, you cannot call me these names or you can't like uh, threaten to cheat on me as a form of punishment or whatever, whatever toxic behavior, right? You would draw that boundary. But if you really think that you might be, the alternative would be literally being alone for the rest of your military career, you put up with it. And it's really sad to see some of that stuff, honestly. Radar systems because one wrong word can bring an intimate relationship to an end. They're in the village. Right. What village? I don't know. Just blow them all up. I don't care. With that said, I'm going to point this out. If you're not a dirtbag, like if you're like smart and you have some empathy and you know how to hold the conversation and you're in okay shape, depending on the base, you can do fine. I was stationed right next to the University of Kansas. I actually did more dating with a better, in my opinion, better caliber of woman, um, in my experience in Kansas than I did ever in college, you know, cause in college I was just some random jabroni in a world of 
you know, an endless sea of indistinguishable, you know, college sophomores or whatever. Um, but at least in the military, they're like, oh, this guy is actually like smart and he has his act together and he's not like a pompous dirt douchebag. And that can go a long way if you have a little bit of something going for you and you're not a D-bag, or at least it used to before dating apps. Uh, dating apps ruined that. Limited taxpayer dollars is your only constraint. You'll need to export as much freedom as possible to places that definitely never ask for. Hospital, sounds like another 25 kill streaks of eight. Introducing your culture to countries you can't even pronounce is the name of the game. The more aggressive that introduction, the better. It's nice to meet you, but it's even better to meet me. <laughs> I won't lie to you and say it's all sunshine and rainbows because combat contains horrors beyond the comprehension of mortal man. Oh. Is this a taunt? Yeah. Yeah. One thing. Okay. I want to point this out. Just listen to this taunt. Uh, are you taunting the enemy team? <laughs> yes. But if you've ever been curious, if you've ever been to a, uh, well, Muslim country, you know that the call to prayer, especially the call to evening prayer, um, can have a sort of ethereal quality to it. But in Afghanistan, the call to prayer would be broadcast over extremely low quality speakers. And so it would be, take on this extremely eerie character to us, right? As a, as a, you know, large, exclusively non-Muslims, right? It had no connotation, but just imagine you would, every time as the sun went down, you would just hear this like, just like eerie, like singing in like weird tones that you've never heard before. It, it gives you the heebie-jeebies, man. Curious as to where your tax dollars I'm so getting canceled for this video. It's their final destination. I'd love to have you along for the ride. Sign up now and join. Get your sign on bonus at 10 to 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, usually, usually those sign on bonuses, you have to meet certain gates. Like you have to finish your basic training to get your sign on bonus, which is fair. Sometimes you have to actually complete certain metrics. Like my brother had to complete um, uh, like certain courses. Um, in order to get his sign-on bonus with the reserves, they're desperate for officers. Style dog! No! Stop. That said, listen, 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 Americans. The military and the Veterans Affairs, I tell this, I'm someone who, I get my healthcare through the VA. The VA healthcare is on par with the private sector healthcare. Now, that's more a testament to the fact that private sector healthcare sucks and veterans sometimes are really like they expect everyone to work as hard as the military does at things. So they're like, why don't you stay for 18 hours to see all your patients today, doctor? And it's like, listen, one of those patients had a had a, you know, s spike coming out of their lung. Like I just I, I had to deal with it, you know, but we all know it. Right. But you get it. Access to that health care for free for the rest of of your life for everything i had some like weird acne shit going on i i got it looked at it's not combat related it's not service related i paid 40 dollars. that's it this year for healthcare. so whatever else happens to you obviously nobody wants to get sent to war but guess what there is no war we left afghanistan we left iraq sign up do two three years in the reserves literally they'll pay you and you'll get healthcare for life. And while you're in the reserves, you get TRICARE for life. Or not TRICARE for life, excuse me. You get TRICARE for your whole family at an extremely discounted rate. It's the best deal. And the US government just doesn't talk about it, you know, which is crazy because they're like, you could get your college paid for. Man, F college, healthcare, the rest of your life. And yeah, people at the VA healthcare sucks. No, it's just healthcare sucks. Styled on, styled on, styled on. Our calm in game is so bad. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Gets blown up by an RPG. Yo. Also, that's an accurate illustration of hitting like a tra an IED trap. Oh, Ron, you good, Sly? <laughs> <laughs> Old school EOTech. <laughs> oh, right in the ass. Gotta make sure. Oh, God. That's what it felt like. Real talk. That's exactly when I would see. I mean, when I was deployed to Afghanistan, I was a platoon leader. I was in charge of 40 soldiers, 40, four zero. And we had 
$12 million of taxpayer equipment. And that doesn't count the parts and fuel and food and water and bullets and everything else that we just like destroyed outright. So just think about that. There were at the peak, I think like 200,000 deployed troops in both wars. So just let that sink in about how much of your money taxpayers, if you're not American, how much of the American taxpayers' money was blown on wars that produced no discernible positive outcome? Iraq is still a disaster, still not really a U.S. ally, and Afghanistan is still run by the Taliban. And we spent $3 trillion, guys. That's, that's so much money. If I were president, I'd draw mechanical dinosaurs into our cities to test our readiness against existential threats with only two rules. No police, no military. Just to see if the garbage man, the firefighters, the construction workers, and the non-OSHA compliant uncertified forklift operators could kick the shit out of a T-Rex in an emergency. Get that motherfucker. This has nothing to do with insurgency, it's the design of my new shaker cup. Thanks to my sponsor GamerStuffs, your prayers have been- Wait, did he really make a-, a Anyway, check, check out his video. I always link it in the description, and we're just going to slide forward a little bit because obviously this has a sponsor uh, itself. Thanks, War Thunder. Sir, 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 sir. <laughs> <laughs> it is the perfect balance of dumbass lizard brain arcade shit. Observer, this is no. a station. Here's a picture of my nuts. <laughs> Transmitting now. And hardcore. Yeah, no one in the military would ever do that. Moving on. Airsoft simulator shit. Enemy, man, 300 meters, north, fast, fast, fast. And I cannot believe I've not heard more about this game. Dog, he's got a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I hope by he didn't tell <laughs> he's got a bipod on his 44 <laughs> Magnum yeah. with a yeah. red dot and a suppressor. And I want to tell you why I love it with this awful tutorial that is awful. I don't even know why I'm calling it that. Turn well, around, dumbass. Right You're going the wrong fucking way. Boot up the game and pick PvP or PvE. Got your ass. They're both super fun, and the only difference, apart from the bots, is how quickly you want to meet Jesus. Why did you pick PvE instead of PvP? My main goal is to blow up. And then what? And then act like I don't know nobody. Is that it? <laughs> Only found the objective. <laughs> oh, fuck. That is actually... I say this unironically. I used to have nightmares when I was deployed about that exact thing happening. It was, like, really vivid ones. I, one time I actually thought it was a premonition. Um, crazy story time. Yeah, I had. OK, I had this vivid dream that exactly that happened, but it happened in a specific location in our AO. And I was like, that's really weird that I would dream of an exact location. Uh, we were in the dream. We were running a checkpoint and this like car stops and people get out and we start yelling at them to like get down, get down. But you can't see because the car's brights are on. And, you know, we, we like try to drop our nod. I don't know why. In the dream, we don't have our nods on. Um, and we're like yelling at them. Also, why are we running a checkpoint in the dream, right? Normally have the Afghans run it and we get standoff. But, it, you know, anyway, the point is we hear these footsteps. And I see this figure run past and my brain, the last thought before I wake up is that was a SSI bomber. You, you know what I mean, an S-bomber. Uh, and then I wake up, right? And so then the next day or the next evening, we're on patrol and we get a call to set up a checkpoint at that location and start searching vehicles. And I literally, I've never done this before or since. I was like, have the Afghans do it. I, I made up some bullshit. I was like, uh, the Afghans uh, say... Uh, they want us here to talk about the checkpoint, uh, the the incident last week, and I think it's really important that we stay here and talk to them. And they were like, oh, okay, just have the Afghans run the checkpoint. And I was like, okay, yeah, we'll observe from out here. Um, it was super bizarre, super bizarre. But to their credit, they were like, okay, Paul never does this. He must have a good reason. I did. 
<laughs> you have one missed call, Heavenly. What the fuck was that? PvE, PvP, doesn't matter. I'll keep it dummy simple. Pick your game mode, pick your class, pick your loadout, shoot bad guys. If you can't follow that, you have brain damage. I just started my first shift at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. My fault. <laughs> the fuck man, up. shut the fuck up, man. Man. Well, if you're watching this video, you definitely have brain damage. For yeah. Push and domination yeah. are based, everything else is cringe. Push, these are classic attackers, defenders fighting over a point, and I think it goes without saying that running at the machine gun is far less fun than firing the machine gun. We have people toasted. Toasted. Got him. Again. But the attackers have enough taxpayer dollars to burn that they can turn that defender's machine gun nest into a, let's say, unpleasant place. Oh, we got bomber drones inbound, boys. I'm not scared. Oh, no. <laughs> wow, that's actually how this dynamic plays out. That's the real deal. Except instead of the machine gun, usually you just take fire, you get the cover, and then you call in uh, Cass. Or, or, or mortars, I guess. Um, yeah, you don't even fuck around. You don't, you don't like try. You're just like, no, they're in a machine, they're in a machine gun. They have a great field of fire. They have superior uh, positioning being on a hill. Uh, they're just like, no, you're just like, no, why do that? Why do we use the tools in your toolkit? This is why Russia just uses artillery all the time because they have it. Why would they risk their soldiers on attacking, charging headlong into the enemy, which they do anyway, because they're idiots, but what use, use the artillery, use the tools you have. That's the point of them. The point of war is to make it as unfair and unsporting as possible. Real war should be like so much lamer than a video game because your goal is to never be in a situation where the teams are evenly matched and there's a 50 50 chance of you coming out on top. You want to have every stupid, cheap hacker advantage you can. You probably should. Be. I don't know, man. You might, you might want to be a little shitted right now. Domination is a total 180. If you go from playing push to playing dom, it's going to feel like you accidentally walked into a base boosted YouTube poop. God damn it, Bobby. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better when you cut it off. Cause I know he's running into the room with a deagle. <laughs> oh god. I mean, listen, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, there's been some goofy conversations on the radio. This isn't that far off from the real radio conversations. Like what, you think war war isn't also boring? Like, war is also boring, my guys. You need to keep yourself stimulated somehow. Wait, I figured it oh. out. He's throwing flashbangs and doing it. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Whoa, that was a good one. Let me got the, let me got the dog in with that one. <laughs> oh. Oh. The map you find yourself on flavors the experience even more. It doesn't matter what game mode you're playing. If you're playing Summit, it's cringe. It doesn't matter what game mode you're playing. If you're playing Prison, it's based. Especially if you hang around A Block. Absolutely cash money every single time. Isn't this where Michelle Obama's from? <laughs> no. God. Oh, man. Holy shit, this is where Michelle Obama's from. Prison? No, A block. Oh, Isn't Michelle a Obama flashback. from like a B block or D block, something like that? No, it's O block. Yeah, she's from O block. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I thought this was just some sort of weird. All right. That's what's up. Also home to Chief Keef. Fuck, bro. There is no meme. From. Michelle Obama is from O block. I got the letter wrong, but you know what I mean. What damn, the? Damn, that's a come up. That's a come up. Fuck are you doing down there? I fear no man. It's only getting lower than this. So don't gentrify old block. Classes won't change your experience that much because they're all deadly. Some are just a special kind of deadly. Ouch. Half the eight classes are either riflemen or spicy riflemen, which are basically Look, mom, I have an M16A4 and shoot bad guys with bullets. Bang. He may be basic, but that doesn't make him harmless because even the most bare bones rifleman can smoke your entire squad. I can't kill this guy, Chad. I'm out of bounds. All the enemies. I can't. Oh, I just <laughs> came in bounds. That was perfect timing. If you ask nicely, this guy yeah, sure. yeah, this is why an infantry squad is like two thirds rifleman. It's good. They're good. They're balanced. Adams. Perfect timing. <laughs> By balanced, as discussed, we mean unbalanced. Perfect timing. Demolitions is rifleman with a side of spicy explosives. Uh, so sometimes you'll have a demolitions guy, but more often it'll be a combat engineer, and they'll operate as like a squad attached to a battalion, and they'll get called out for stuff. 
you'll call them and be like, hey man, we need you to breach a door. Sometimes if they know you're gonna breach, they'll just attach the combat engineer. Um, but in Iraq and Afghanistan, those guys also were certified to dispose of certain classes of IED. And so they would often get roped into that. Got that guy. <laughs> when they weren't doing other engineer shit like building stuff. That guy. Yeah. Somebody. Oh, I got this him, baby. And no oh splash damage. I am a Let god. Go. I am such Let a god. Go. Oh, that's a bad guy. Commander is his rifleman with binoculars, but those binoculars can turn everyone on the map to ash. So you may want to pick somebody that doesn't misclick. So I called an artillery, and I thought I clicked on B, but it turns out I clicked right next to me or something. Oh, uh, this is actually a real problem. Uh, when you have commanders who panic, this is why we train them a lot. Um that sometimes in a tight spot, they will call for fire and they will look at their GPS and they will read the numbers to the, the FDC, the fire direction center or their x-ray or whatever. This is a problem because the numbers on the GPS are your location. You want the enemy's location. So you have to do some math, right? Imagine getting shot at and having to do math, all right? This is the bullshit you deal with. Though it becomes easier when you have the some of the mapping software because you can literally, if you know where you are and you sort of have a knowledge of the terrain, this is what I would do. Like I would study the terrain before every patrol so that I could kind of recognize it um, and triangulate on the map. Um, so that I would just be able to intuit, like you glance at the map. It's like Google Maps, right? You look down at it and when it's in your neighborhood, you're like, oh, yeah, right. We're, we're right here at this intersection. They're at this mountaintop, to first peak, second peak. They're right here. You click on it on the map. It gives you the GPS coordinates. You read them off. Done deal. And uh, But, go. you know, you got to be like trained properly to do that. Oh, cool. With the power to call in the A-10 Warthog, it can be the most gratifying class in the whole game. Oh, perfect. Yo, there it comes, there it comes. That should get people. <laughs> Baby. Absolutely. They got lit up. That's the real commander experience, guys. You get a radio and binos. That fucking M4 is fucking decoration. You think I'm you, you think I'm like trolling around or whatever. Bro, that's the that's a fact. That is a fact of being the boss. Yes, I got a kill with it, finally. Well, I got four with that run. In case you don't know what the A-10 is, it's a flying Gatling gun made by a washing machine company that specializes in turning bad guys into spaghetti and American soldiers into insurance claims. Bro, those, um... Uh, those... Eight, the, well, GE, GE can make a fucking product back when it was run by engineers. Uh, you know, they designed the A-10, I think, in the 80s or 90s. Bro, if you buy an 80s washing machine, that thing is an A-10, okay? That thing will last forever. Those dryers, those dryers are just unstoppable. That's why every apartment complex has those, like, Speed King from GE washers. They were made in the 80s. They just never stop running. Boy, I sure am excited to see my family again. The gun that the A-10 is built around has so much recoil that if it fires for too long, the plane will fall out of the sky due to lack of lift. <laughs> Wait, what? This is actually crazy. But with this incredible power of an A-10 or an Apache or heavy artillery, there is tremendous pressure to use it effectively, because if you don't, your whole team will notice. Kill not confirmed. Cringe activated. Cringe. Cringe. So it's a delicate balance of calling it in close enough to objectives to maximize casualties, but not so close that those casualties are your own teammates. Great. 45, baby! 45 <laughs> caliber, that's all I need. Hey, oh, nice gun run. Yep, that's true. Those things will punch right through fucking walls. He almost got me, friendly fire. Almost, keyword. That's why the commander slot is so often empty, because most players don't want that kind of pressure weighing on their every click. I'm gonna call an artillery, by the way. I'm swapping to explosive artillery. Oh, get inside oh, right fucking player? now. Get inside, get inside. <laughs> I misclicked. Oh, damn, that's like a pretty real looking Afghan base there. Please not do not this. stay outside. <laughs> no! If you want all the importance but none of the responsibility, play Observer, who is just rifleman with radio. Literally all you do is stand next to the commander to call in his orders. It's so simple, it's almost confusing. What's the button? Uh, you don't. You literally stand next to me. That's <laughs> okay, it. Okay, <laughs> That's okay. all you do. You are needed. Good job. You, you did it. Great. Congratulations. Great. Great. That's Great. all. I'm gone. Advisor gets to run bougie exotic sh Yeah, the, um, 
This is funny. This is that's true. That's kind of what an FO does. Yeah, they sit next to the commander. Commander is like, hey, I need you to make those guys blow up. And then the FO is the one who they're trained specifically. They do that fancy math and they also can do things like um, uh, tell the artillery more information that will help them do a good, a better fire mission. So they'll sit there and go, hey, uh, there's enemy. They're actually at an elevated position slightly. They're in the open. Um, so you need to do HE rounds, but, uh, you know, or like, hey, uh, they're actually sort of dug in. So like open with an AP, but then switch to HE, some bullshit like that. They can also talk to the aircraft on station and they'll be like, hey, listen, what's your ordinance load right now? Okay, the aircraft will be like, we have this and that type of munition. And he'll go, okay, here's what I think is the best munition for this target so the observers can be really good they'll also have in their radio like a gazillion frequencies programmed into it so they can sit there and be like oh this is the standard frequency for a10s oh they're uh oh on station we have uh english a10s oh okay normally they use these frequencies i'll just switch over they it's a little the real world that technical bullshit is again so important shit like the Tavor, but I don't really fuck with the fancy pants guns, because Breacher, Marksman, and Gunner offer way more dumbass possibilities. But Man, be advised. Oh, I'm yeah, advisors back in the day were famous for just doing whatever the fuck they wanted. I knew a guy who just literally just wore a giant Kevlar on a, or a giant K-bar on an aftermarket uh, plate carrier. This was in like 06. Um, and just it never wore a helmet, because he literally wasn't in the authority chain of any of the units. He's also like, yeah, technically back then you got a combat patch for every unit AO you served in. So he's like, I'm actually authorized to wear literally 12 combat patches. I thought that was really funny. Not suppress MG3, Nikki, I'm a Nikki, man, I show you something Somebody stop seat. me. Sandstorm feels like the only game in existence that understands the range of shotguns. Tango. Ouch. Uh, and that makes Breacher absolutely god tier. Any class that lets me use the KS-23 is bonafide base. I got your picture, on, I'm coming with me. Your farts are on the same yeah. level as a burning hit of tires. Oh my yeah, god, I'm nuts. I'm nuts. Four gauge is absolutely bonkers lunacy nuts. <laughs> it is a six gauge shotgun. What Europeans would call a four gauge. What the hell what is the even fuck? that? To all my international viewers, the lower the number, the scarier. And a standard 12 gauge is already a colossal caliber. I was driving through upstate New York and I saw a Tesla with the license plate, I'm him. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a preemptive strike on who are you? I don't know, but that license plate made me laugh so hard I walked up to his window and put a 12 gauge slug in his chest. <laughs> And we're going Jesus from that Christ. to 10 gauge, to 8 gauge, to 6 gauge. Oh, God. I feel equally sorry for both your target and your shoulder. Hello, oh. housekeeping. Hey. Yeah, oh. shut the fuck up, housekeeping. <laughs> Got him. Got him. A 4 gauge indoors. Actually, a 4 gauge anywhere. Terrifying. Badger, what you said to me was not very nice. I don't know where they are. Hear it again. Jesus. Yeah, that thing packs a punch. I don't know if I don't think the real US Army used the KS-23. We used um I called it Oh my god. It's it's um there I think it's an M500. It's a Mossberg 500 shotgun. But it would literally just be used to breach and then they would switch to an M4. Usually, doctrinally. I think in practice, a lot of those guys probably just like to keep the shotgun instead of fumbling with two weapons. S-23 is what happened when the Soviets saw an anti-aircraft gun and thought, nah, it should be shoulder fire. We're even in Ouch. There, yeah. And that's what it is. You are carrying a 23 millimeter disc. God, gun nerd badger, man. Okay, we're coming up on a half hour. Anti-aircraft gun barrel. Any class that lets me shoot that, sign me the fuck up. Hello. There's oh. Ooh, that range is nutty. That range is insane. Yeah, this is actually also accurate, right? Like 300 meters is a really small target, but that's what carbines are meant to stretch out to. So this is shotgun range. Hey, give up now. Got give up him now. Right in the chest. I cleared it. Got him. I'm nuts. Oh, I'm nuts. Four gauge. Oh, it's nuts. It's so nuts. You guys know I have a habit of using shotguns as sniper rifles and sniper rifles as shotguns, and the marksman class is no exception. I too use a fucking sniper rifle for CQC. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's long range, short range, small map, big map. Every situation I see is a nail, and the M82 I'm holding is a hammer. Hey, hey, stop that. <laughs> Jesus. 
Oh, why don't yeah, you get okay. back outside, buddy? You chose the wrong alleyway, boys. He, he dropped a couple of notches here. after that. Oh my oh, god, like a freight train. Jesus. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to understate how powerful a 50 cal that close is. <laughs> oh my god, I'm that time. Full like range too. I penetrated the bars and killed that guy. Badger. Yeah, that's how a real 50 would operate. I mean it may the, the trajectory would get kind of fucked up, but it would punch through steel bars like that. Genuinely surprised when his anti-material rifle goes through materials. <laughs> <laughs> Truly one of the highlights of Insurgency Sandstorm. I cannot get enough of this thing. That thunder is all right, guys, we are right at 30 minutes. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to finish this bad boy out. We're just about halfway through, and I, I, you know I love Russian Badger. Uh, anyway, guys, that is all I had. And uh, thank you guys for being you. See you in the next one.